Hey guys, my name is Minas, and today I'm going to be talking about the embryological development of the lungs. And as usual, I'm going to break it down very simply so that if you have no idea what is going on, you will understand how the lung develops by the end of it. And we're going to start in the beginning as always so that if you don't know anything about embryology, not just about the lungs, then you should get a grasp of what's going on. We're going to begin at the blastula. That's the ball of cells. That's the result of fertilization when the sperm and the egg fuse and they go down the uterine tube and then they implant onto the uterine wall. And once implanted, they undergo a process called gastrulation, which turns the ball of cells. In the middle, there'll be three germ layers, ectoderm, a mesoderm, and endoderm. And this is an oversimplification for this. In blue, we have the ectoderm, the red is mesoderm, and green is the endoderm. And in this three steps, you'll notice that the ectoderm pinches off and becomes a neural tube. You'll notice the mesoderm uh, differentiating into three parts, and you'll notice the endoderm becoming a tube, it's pinching off as well. The mesoderm has three parts, the paraxial mesoderm, which becomes muscle, the intermediate mesoderm, which becomes gonadic kidney, and the lateral plates. The lateral plates, there is a somatic mesoderm and a splanchnic mesoderm. And how this has anything to do with the lungs is this. So the first high yield point is where does the lung come from in this picture? The epithelial cells are made from gut tube, endoderm, and the cartilage, muscle, and connective tissue is from splanchnic mesoderm. That's the first high yield point. Okay, so this being cross-section of the very early primitive fetus, this way, we're going to have a look at the fetus at four weeks in a sagittal section. And you'll see it's all color-coded. In green, we have endoderm, uh, the GIT. And you'll notice that the respiratory diverticulum is an outpouching of the GIT. So at week four, the lung bud appears, and it's an outgrowth from the ventral, or the front part of the GIT, of the foregut. Okay, that's the second high yield point. If we just forget everything here and just focus down here, this being in week four, around 16 days, and now this is in uh, about 25 days, we have here the foregut, it's color coded in green, and the respiratory diverticulum, or the initial lung blood, is, uh, lung bud, is in blue. So what happens is that trachea esophageal ridges form and eventually pinch off the respiratory diverticulum from the foregut. And during these phases, the outpouching will also develop into bronchial buds, where this is the lung bud, these outpouchings are the bronchial buds. They will form the trachea, and these two will initially will become the right main bronchus and the left main bronchus. And that's a good example over here at week five, where we have a trachea, the right main bronchus with its bronchial buds, and the left main bronchus and its bronchial buds. So just to recap, lung comes from endoderm, or its epithelial cells come from endoderm, from splanchnic mesoderm, we get connective tissue, muscles, and um, the cartilage. And also, splanchnic mesoderm makes splanch splanchnic and somatic mesoderm make up both the visceral and parietal uh, pleura, respectively. Okay, so let's have a look at week six. Over here, we have a week six lung and then a week eight lung. So you'll notice that with growth, the lung tissue expands and fills this red, which is color coded for mesoderm. 
and the space in between here is called the pericardio pericardio peritoneal canal and the lung will grow caudally and laterally so that means it'll grow down and out filling the cavity that it will that the body allows it to fill so it'll continue to grow and as it grows the primary bronchi will form three secondary bronchi bronchi on the right and two secondary bronchi on the left and this is foreshadowing the different the lobes of the lung so we have three lobes on the right side and two lobes on the left side okay so from week five to week eight we have the lungs rapidly filling up the body cavity or the pericardio peritoneal cavity and it fills it up to the point where it's all it's stuck to the visceral pleura the visceral pleura is from splanchnic mesoderm and the parietal pleura the one on the outside is from somatic mesoderm from lateral plates and so histologically we have here a terminal bronchiole and this is the last point of the bronchiole where there are no alveoli and over here we have a respiratory bronchiole with which actually has alveoli attached to it so initially it's all cuboidal epithelial cells surrounding everywhere including at the terminal sacs here the terminal sacs are just blind ended sacs that will become the alveoli and if you notice over here as it develops the blood cap capillaries become migrated and invade the terminal sacs and as well you'll notice that there are squamous epithelial cells being made at the end where the capillaries are actually invading so the squamous epithelium are also known as type 1 alveoli cells and they get thin so that gas exchange can happen okay the blood vessels invade so that oxygen can go in and then carbon dioxide can come out with ventilation okay so as the lungs mature the vascular su supply is increasing and also type 2 alveoli are beginning to produce surfactant before birth the lungs are filled with fluid and this fluid contains phospholipids proteins and surfactant as well as other proteins some of this fluid actually goes into the amnion where it acts on macrophages these macrophages migrate to the chorion and release interferon 1 beta which help to stimulate the production of prostaglandins and we know that prostaglandins actually stimulate uterine contractions and so we can say that there's some evidence that the fetus can actually signal the initiation of labor I think that that's very interesting also um, before birth some of this fluid is aspirated and that actually will help to define the muscles help to improve the respiratory muscles of the fetus for birth and when the baby is born most of this fluid is actually absorbed except for the surfactant which coats the lining of the lungs and helps to make uh, oxygenation and ventilation from lung expansion much easier because it reduces the surface tension finally let's talk about some of the uh, things that could go wrong with the development of the lung namely esophageal atresia so essentially you can have three forms of this you can have a blind end and a fistula that connects the trachea to the distal esophagus you can have two blind ends or you can have a communication of the esophagus with the trachea but still have a hollow tube of a full esophagus going to the stomach thank you very much for watching and i appreciate your time